Hi, my name is Sinead Moriarty and I am the author of The New Girl. Um, so I've been writing for nearly 20 years now and I've written 15 adult novels and I just decided that I wanted to write for children but I didn't know what to write about. And then a couple of years ago I was watching the news and I was watching all these awful um, awful documentaries and news bulletins about uh, the Syrian refugees who were fleeing Syria because of the terrible war. And then you were seeing all these families, mums, dads, grannies, granddads and children getting into these little dinghies and sailing from Turkey to Greece to try and get to safety. And sometimes they made it and sometimes they didn't make it. Sometimes they drowned because sometimes the smugglers didn't help them. And sometimes the smugglers gave them fake life jackets and a lot of Syrians can't swim. And anyway, I was looking at all these terrible pictures and images and I just thought, how do I explain to my own three kids who were quite young at the time, how do I explain to them why somebody would leave their country and risk their lives to get to safety? And so I started thinking about it. And then the picture of a little Syrian girl came to my mind and her name was Safa. And I could see her and I thought, okay, I'm gonna write a book about a little girl. She's gonna be 11 years of age and she's gonna flee Syria because of the war with her father and her mother. She's an only child and she comes to Ireland and she comes to school. And when she arrives in school, Ruby, who's a girl in her class, is asked by the teacher to look after Safa. So Ruby is absolutely furious because she doesn't want to look after the new girl. She doesn't want to look after the refugee girl. She doesn't know what refugees are and she thinks they might be a bit dodgy. So she doesn't want to look after her. And Ruby has a lot going on in her own, in her own life. And the book, The New Girl, is really about that. It's about you never know what's going on in somebody else's life and how important it is to walk a mile in someone's shoes. So in, in the end of the book, Ruby and Safa become really good friends. And Ruby's life is difficult because four years ago, her little brother Robbie was born. And Robbie has uh, special needs, quite severe special needs. And her mum had to give up her job to look after Robbie full time. And her dad, who uh, is a taxi driver, has to work loads of extra hours to pay for Robbie's care. And Ruby just feels that nobody looks after her anymore or cares about her or her sister. And she's very lonely and she's very sad. And she knows Robbie's her brother and she knows she should love him, but sometimes she kind of hates him. And so she's very conflicted about that and she feels ashamed of those feelings. And in the book, when Ruby and Safa get to know each other, they end up helping each other. And, you know, one of the things I really wanted to say in the book was the power of words. Like if you say something kind to somebody, that's a very powerful thing. That can actually make their day, their week, their month. And if you say something cruel to somebody, that can absolutely crush them. So it's very important to know the power of words and to be very careful what you say to people. It's also very important not to judge somebody by the way they look or their religion or their background or because they're different from you. What's important is that you try and walk a mile in their shoes and understand what their life is like. And that's how barriers come down and friendships are made. And so when I was researching the new girl, I got in touch with the Irish Refugee Council and they put me in touch with this amazing family, the Al Hariri family. And they are, well, the, I met, there's actually five daughters, but three of them live in Ireland. So I met Sarah and Amira and Takwa and their lovely mum. And they eventually made it to Ireland, having been smuggled through Syria in the back of a truck the whole way through Turkey, hot, roasting hot, crammed truck for days and days going the whole way through Turkey. Then when they got to the beach in Turkey, the smuggler said, oh, there's a boat there. And then they left. They were supposed to actually bring them to Greece, but the smugglers just got it back into the truck and left them. And there was a boat, a blow up dinghy that would fit 12 people, but 50, five zero, 50 people squashed into that boat because they had no choice. And the lovely Al Hariri family, Sarah, her sisters and her mum got into that boat and by a miracle, they made it to Greece alive and eventually they ended up in Ireland. And Sarah, who is the middle sister, is uh, the one that I kind of really connected with and she's become like a, I feel like her aunt or her godmother or something. She's a very special person in my life. And I dedicated my book to her because she's an amazing girl. So she arrived in Ireland in fifth year. She spoke no English, well, very little English. Um, and it was a new country. It was a new everything. And she went to school, fifth and sixth year. And she did her leaving cert. And she's now studying pharmaceutical science. And I'm so proud of her. And she's just incredible. And so are her sisters. So I suppose the point I'm trying to make is that even writing this book, even researching this book, I met the most amazing people who've changed my life and I've been able to walk a little bit in their shoes. So words and stories are very, very, very powerful. So I'm going to read you the first chapter 
of the new girl. So each chapter is from a different voice. So it's either Ruby talking or it's Safa talking. So this is Ruby. And as I said, Ruby's having a tough time because of Robbie having special needs and just her whole family's been turned upside down. And she's just struggling really. And her older sister Orla is sort of 15, 16. She wears a lot of fake tan. She has this fake American accent and she doesn't really seem to care about Ruby either. So Ruby feels very alone in the world. Okay, so this is Ruby's voice. Ruby knew it was wrong to hate your brother, but sometimes she did hate Robbie, like really, really hated him. And then she'd feel guilty about it and sick to her stomach. Hating was bad, she knew that, but sometimes Robbie was hard to love. Orla, her sister, walked in front of her on the way to school, talking loudly into her phone. I know, oh my God, like no way. I, I have to get that new fake tan, it's amazing. Ruby thought her older sister sounded ridiculous. She sounded like a fake American from LA when she was just a stupid Irish teenager. And the last thing she needed was more fake tan. In fact, that morning at breakfast, Dad had said that Orla looked like she'd been rolled in cheesy Doritos. Ruby and her mom had laughed. And then Orla had told her dad that he was too old to know what was cool these days anyway. And dad said he was pretty sure going out with an orange face and body wasn't in fashion. Ruby loved having a laugh with her mom and dad, but they didn't do it much anymore. Robbie took up all of mum and dad's time and energy, so they never really had much time for the girls. And they must have laughed too loudly because Robbie started having a tantrum. He threw his arms and legs around, flung his bowl on the floor and started screaming. Ruby hated her little brother for ruining her precious moment with her mum and dad. Robbie kind of ruined everything. Orla yapped away on her phone while Ruby dragged her heels. There was a new girl starting in the class today. Miss Ingle had told them the previous Friday. Ruby didn't want any new girl in her class. She felt anxious around new people. She didn't want them to find out about Robbie and feel sorry for her, or worse, avoid her like some people did. Whenever Amber and Chrissy in her class saw her out in town with Robbie, they always crossed the road and pretended they hadn't seen her. And it hurt. It hurt that no one else in her class had a brother with disabilities. It hurt that no one understood how hard it was. And now some new girl was gonna join the class and she'd soon find out about Ruby's little brother. So that's just a little taster of the book. Um, and look, I hope you enjoy it. Um, I hope that it opens your eyes and your hearts and your minds like it did mine when I was writing it. And just remember the power of empathy, of kind words, and of walking a mile in somebody else's shoes. Thank you very much.